YouTube as it going the Godals is back with the Dallas Cowboys video a preview what to watch what to expect for the upcoming 2024 season uh, first comment on this video will decide which team I do next so we'll see who wins that race we have a playlist on the channel full of the teams that we have done so far in this series and we will get to every NFL team the Dallas Cowboys uh, the, what are the fans talking about right now this offseason when it comes to the Cowboys? Yeah, they had an interesting offseason, a little bit of a quiet of an offseason. People want to say that maybe on paper they've gotten a little bit worse. They've lost more than they've gained, and people kind of talking about they already can't get over that playoff hump, so how are they going to do it now? I'm going to talk about how they possibly – possibly could be more suited for the playoffs or how they actually could surprise people even though maybe they got worse on paper that actually could be better it's a possibility we'll break it down uh top three things to watch what to watch for number three the defensive line versatility of the alignment the different alignments in the rotation a lot of this has to do with mike zimmer coming in there and we'll talk more in this video throughout this video about Mike Zimmer, about going from Dan Quinn to Mike Zimmer, but they lose a big-time defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn, and they gain a big-time one in Mike Zimmer. I'm excited for it. I'm a big Mike Zimmer fan. Uh, I, I don't know if I love him as a head coach uh, the way it ended, but I, he's a really good defensive coordinator. Uh, but they already have versatile pieces in a, in a pretty good rotation there when it comes to the Cowboys' front, starting with their star player, Micah Parsons, who has transitioned to more of a full-time edge rusher, as he should because he's so damn good at it, and you like to think he still has upside. But he is very capable of playing off-ball off ball linebacker. He is very capable of dropping in coverage even from that edge position. I would keep an eye on that, um, even though you do want him rushing as much as possible because he's that good at it. But Mike Zimmer is well-known for his simulated pressures, dropping a defensive lineman in coverage and having someone else essentially blitz. It's, it's, it's essentially a way of getting unique pressure, uh, unexpected pressure. Um, and Mike Zimmer is he's the best at it. He really is. And simulated pressure started to make a comeback a little bit. Uh, the Mike McDonald and the Ravens, I thought, did a really good job of it last year. Other teams as well. So Mike Zimmer goes to a place that that, that has the pieces for it in Dallas. It's going to be really fun to watch. So watch for Micah Parsons to drop. Into, you know, team's kind of game planning for his rushing ability, and he's still going to do a lot of it. But pre-snap, everyone's watching Micah Parsons and – Boom, he drops in coverage, and they're trying to figure out who the hell is rushing in his place. Where is he coming from? It's it's unexpected, and that's good. It's very good. Uh, but they also have – they drafted a guy like Marshawn Nealon. Love the draft pick. Think a really good fit. It was a guy that I really liked. You know, that la you know he was really growing on me that last month, of the, you know, heading into the draft. And he's a guy that has the physicality and the, and the ability to play – run defense you know, at a high level to be able to slide inside, maybe play a three technique at times, even though he is an edge rusher. Um, you got a good, you know, good upside athletic uh, edge rusher and Sam Williams, who just got to, you know, stay out of trouble off the field. Obviously, you have Demarcus Lawrence, who's a starter opposite of Mike Parsons. You have some defensive linemen. You have some linebackers that have some blitz ability as well. But another thing Mike Zimmer did a lot of in Minnesota he always had really good defenses, and they always were really good at forcing third down. And his defenses were his de defenses were historically good, historically good on third down. And what he did a lot of when forcing teams not only into third down but passing their obvious passing third downs, he would just bring a, all pass rushers, like three or four pass rushers, in take the big boys out. Put those guys on the defensive line, the pet, the edge rushers, you know, and, and I think we'll see a bit of that, you know, with Micah Parsons on the outside, maybe Nealon on the inside. Hell, we could have Demarcus Lawrence on the inside and Sam Williams outside of him, Golson outside of him, and he did that with the Vikings, and he had guys that are just strictly edge rushers. He'd put them on the inside because hey, we're we're rushing these guys as fast as we can because it's an obvious passing third down. We don't have to worry about the run. So, so some different things that Mike Zimmer does compared to Dan Quinn. Um, you know, that that could actually be highlighted in this defense because they have the pieces. So uh, they have the rotation. I mentioned some of the key rotation guys. So I'm curious about all those things, the different alignments, the different looks, uh, you know, kind of the, the surprise rushes, the, the simulated pressures that Mike Zimmer is known for, and it, which seem to be making a comeback in, in today's NFL like I talked about. So really excited about that. We'll come back to the defense a little bit more, though, in a second. But how about the Dak and C.D. Lamb connection? I don't think people are talking about that enough, probably because, and they are on contract years, but they both need contracts. It just feels like Dak is going to play under the, you know, this expiring deal, and 
it really feels like he's going to gamble on himself, which I love. He's going to gamble on himself, and the Cowboys want to gamble on it as well and just see where they're at. You know, Maybe the Cowboys want to see if he can win the big games, and then maybe Dak wants to see if uh, he can get more money if he tests free agency because that seems to be the way with quarter, good quarterbacks here, and he's a very solid one. Um, but so I like that CD lamb, you know, we're going to wait and see what happens here. He needs to be out there. Will he be out there if he doesn't have a contract? So I guess that's to be determined. Um, this take, what I'm about to say kind of has to do with them both being out there, but if they are both out there, both on a contract year and we know Dak should be, I think that's great. I, you, you know, especially a guy like Dak, you know he is going to ball out and earn some insane contract, and that could be good for the Cowboys because he's if the mentality, they just the feeling I get right now is Dak is out there to prove something still, and I love that. I love that feeling. So he actually could play a lot better. And what people really aren't talking about, maybe they were talking about during the season, during the regular season last year, the Dak Lamb, mainly C.D. Lamb, you know, they – and Dak was in the MVP conversation. They took a step up last year. I know the playoffs; it was not, it wasn't great. But looking at the regular season, and you know, which takes up majority of the season, they took a step up together. I mean, Lamb, Lamb took that next step up. Like he was, I thought he he was in the offensive player of the year conversation. In my opinion, he was that good. Um, I I thought he was arguably the best receiver in football, you know, last season based off last season. And in the past, like he was always good, even at Oklahoma, he was good, but there would be random times where he kind of disappeared. He needed to play like certain defenses where he would thrive, but I, I, he just took a major step up of being super consistent. And he had some insane games where he was just unstoppable. So in, in him and Dak having that connection, great it, it grew a ton more more than you think so what people really aren't talking about I, I think that was like the first year of that last year so could they take another step up and that is kind of scary to think about like could they be even better like could lamb be i, I think we know we're going to get from Dak, but again he's on a contract year out to prove something so he can play lights out maybe he plays better in the playoffs um but lamb i think it's very realistic to think even though it doesn't look like it based off his production last year, I think he actually, because he's young and he's still getting better, he could take another step up, and that is scary. Scary to think about. So could they grow even further? Could they be that more dominant there? That's what I'm watching for. And number one, back to the defense in this there's some negatives in here, but there's some positive, possible positives as well. But the effects on the defense you know, from the adjustments going from Dan Quinn to Mike Zimmer. So the negatives, you lose Dan Quinn. The defense was great. Dan Quinn was great. They lose him. That's a negative. A, a big, the, you know, a big thing to go a little bit more in depth, what, I, what could be a negative or what maybe the fear is for some people is they built this defense to fit Dan Quinn's defense. Uh, besides this last draft, this last offseason, which they didn't add an insane amount, I suppose. But uh, they built it to fit in Dan Quinn's defense. A lot of man coverage. A ton of man coverage. Really good man coverage. They built it to fit that defense. And Mike Zimmer's going to have, and who knows, he might run more man than normal. He could, His defense can run man coverage. But he had a lot of cover, too, in Minnesota. A lot of zone coverage as well. But they did mix it up a bit. Um, you know, so it... it it is a little bit different. So, do these players that were that you know that were great, Javon Diggs, uh, Deron Bland, corners like that, the safeties that were weren't really big name safeties, but Dan Quinn kind of turned them, in, you know, not huge name safeties, but I think he made them play better than what they were. Uh, Mike Zimmer did some of that, maybe in. Uh, well, maybe not made them bigger names than what they were. Harrison Smith's probably a future Hall of Famer, but um, maybe he deserves some credit for that there. Um, you know, so my point is, do these guys fit the new defensive scheme? Are they, you know, mainly the corners? Are they strictly man coverage corners? Can they play more of the zone? These are kind of the the they're not for sure negatives, but the kind of what some people's fear fears are. But again, Mike Zimmer likes to run a lot of cover two. I typically think the man coverage corners are good in cover two because uh, you want your corners to press in cover two. You want them to, to to basically ride the receivers outside of their, their jurisdiction, which is the flats. Um, so I, I think they'll be pretty solid. 
But the positives here, Mike Zimmer's a really good defensive coach. You're adding more. We talked about the simulated pressures. We talked about the simulated pressures. Getting pressures in uni- pressure in unique ways, unexpected ways, could be huge. It kind of adds a different flavor to the defense. And I, did, I having Eric Kendricks, who is familiar, you know, is he going to be that elite Eric Kendricks that we had that Zimmer had for a couple of years? Probably not, but he's going to be better than he was the last couple of years because um, he really fits this defense. But having guys like you know, Damone Clark could be really good, but um, Leah Fowl, I think, could be as special as a, like a unique blitzer in different ways for this, this defense and overshone as well. I liked him a lot out of Texas. It was unfortunate he got injured last year. Um, you know, and then maybe like Donovan Wilson could blitz as well, so we'll see. But um, they have uh, – they got the pieces that actually that actually could fit Mike Zimmer's defense, even though it's an adjustment. But the big thing here – the big thing is maybe the one negative about Dan Quinn's defense. With the, de- the defense started to give up a little bit down the stretch last year in the playoffs. And the one negative is that we talked about how it's a crazy good man coverage defense, but it gets predictable. Chances are they are in man coverage, even though they, they, they run zone. It's not like they don't run any zone. but And I noticed that for teams – that are really good in man coverage all year, they are not as good in the playoffs because they are predictable. People know, and it's all about game plan in the playoffs. Coaching is a bigger factor in the playoffs. Getting your team, obviously, ready, it's more of a factor in the playoffs. So they become a little more predictable. Like the Packers knew what they were going to be in last year. They knew exactly what the dotted game plan for them. So Mike Zimmer switches it up a little bit. He adds a little bit more, actually. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a better defensive coordinator. He could, he could be. You know, he was a few years ago, uh, maybe a little more than a few years ago. But he just adds a little bit more to this Cowboys defense where they could be. I'm actually going to say they will be less predictable. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll be better, but they'll be more unpredictable. And that actually could help them in a playoff type game. They actually could be worse in the regular season because they're trying to, these players are used to Dan Quinn's defense and they're trying to adjust this defense. And, and, you know, but they actually, so they could be worse in the regular season, but they make the playoffs and they the defense could actually be better in the playoffs because it's more unpredictable. Um, you know, so that, that based on every single year of football in the NFL, it makes a lot of sense. You know, it, that that's it's a big factor. Um, you know, just switching it up, being unpredictable, especially when you get to those big games where teams are just kind of really rolling off their game plan. So it kind of secretly could make them better here. So I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious. Mainly those corners. Those corners are built for their playmaking ability and man coverage. So how will they be when they're running a little more zone? And will Zimmer run more zone? Will he just try to stick with the, what Dan Quinn was doing, but add his kind of own flavor? These are big questions. We're waiting to see. It's you know what to watch for a reason. So excited about it. Excited about it. Uh, players to watch. I'm gonna go Jake Ferguson. Somehow I think Ferguson's a little underrated. Like the guy was a, and everyone knows he was good last year, but he was an absolute stud. This guy was a really fun to watch, an absolute beast, very physical. He was more and more of a factor, I thought, every week going forward throughout the season. He got his hands on the ball, a little bit more targets. As the season went on, he became a little bit more consistent. Early in the year, it was like, I mean, right out the gate, it's like, all right, this guy, they might have something with Jake Ferguson a little more than we thought, but then it was kind of a game where it was like a little quiet, and then it was a game that he was kind of back, you know, or three catches, one catch, four catches, games like this is top of my head. But uh, I thought it was a lot more consistent, a lot more high, higher volume consistently as the year went on. So it's like, and we saw how good Dalton Schultz looked as he was a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more of a veteran, a little bit more experienced, I should say. Uh, so I think Ferguson could be scary good, scary good. So people don't really talk about that. Like Lamb could, as good as he is right now, he actually get better. Ferguson, as good as he was last year, he actually definitely can get better. So they got some serious, legit targets uh, for Dak Prescott there still, and that guys that could actually get better. Uh, number two, I'm gonna go Rico Dowdle. I mean, that's a big one here. I, I think some people are assuming Zeke's gonna be that running back, that's that starter. I don't know. Dowdle, like when he had his. His opportunities last year, he looked explosive. He looked pretty good. And then the Cowboys saw that and they knew they made mistakes, um, you know, paying running backs in the past. And they were like, we're just going to roll with the next guy. Um, and he's he's sneaky. He's sneaky, explosive. He can catch the ball out of the backfield and go. Uh, we still, It's still 
a big learning experience. Like, can he do those things full time? Can he do more of those things? Um, somewhat of a small sample size. He had some action though. He had some action last year. So I think he's going to be the guy. Obviously they have Zeke for short yardage. They have Zeke for maybe more than short yardage. They have some other guys in that roster. Uh, who they bring in Royce Freeman. They have Snoop Connor. That could be a little sneaky there, I suppose. But uh, I, I, this guy is going to be their guy. And I think he'll be better than what people expect. But it's a lot of pressure on him. It is something I didn't watch because does – can he be that guy? So a little bit of a questions there, some questions there. And then number one, Trayvon Diggs, who I'm a big fan of. I was a big fan out of Alabama. I knew he'd be as good as he was, as good of a playmaker as he was. But how will he be? Two things. After the injury, uh, before even, you know, he didn't even play last year. That was tough. And then going from Dan Quinn's defense to Mike Zimmer's defense. He was so good in man coverage, being a playmaker there. I think he has the ability to play in Mike Zimmer's defense. Mike Zimmer's really good at coaching corners. Uh, and there is, you know, I think man coverage corners translate very nicely to cover two and vice versa. I I, I believe so. But we'll see. Uh, and Zimmer's going to mix some more in there as well. So will he be able to handle other zone coverages at a higher volume? Uh, I, I think he can do it, but we'll see. But a knock, the people that don't like Diggs, that don't love Diggs, kind of they go back to the, years, the year where he was Pro Bowl. But they'll, they, you know, they'll say that, well, look at how many catches or how much yards he gave up. You know, so those people you know, didn't like him as much, but people don't realize that he was in man coverage an insane amount of snaps. We're, we're comparing, yeah, he gave up this when he was covering the guy, he gave up this many yards. Where comparison, this other top corner, the guy was in zone, you know, and he had help over the top and uh, more help over the top or underneath. So it's it's a stupid comparison. Um, so could zone coverage be easier for Diggs? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, man coverage kind of just takes, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, athletic ability, um, physicality and just being able to stick, be sticky in coverage and zone takes a lot, you know, a lot of brains, um, but those things as well. Uh, so we'll see what type of, what type of player he is, but big fan of Diggs. I think he could be very good still, but it's a, a guy to watch off injury and switching defensive coordinators and a little bit of a uh, coverage scheme change, I suppose. Uh, games to watch, uh, obviously besides the divisional games, the Eagles games will be big. Uh, they shellacked, uh, the giants last year, both times. So let's see if that's the case again, commanders could be a little sneaky, I suppose, but other games that I really like, how about the lions in week six, they had a battle at the end of the year last year, ended on a, on controversial call, which I think people talked about or freaked out about a little too much. Yeah, did the refs mess up in that game? Yes, but people kind of act like the Lions got screwed out of the two-point conversion. But if they would have got the two-point conversion and they would have stood, the Cowboys actually got screwed because the refs did not inform him that the offense lineman, offense lineman was uh, was eligible. So the, they needed a redo either way. So I, I don't know if one team actually got screwed more than the other in that. So, um, But besides the point, I think it's going to be a really good game. But the one thing you do worry about the Cowboys is stopping the run but Mike Zimmer should do a better job of elevating that but the interior defensive line is a weak point so in the Lions play that smash mouth football they'll punch you in the mouth pretty damn good so can they handle that in week six with the with this where the season starts to kind of kick in the gear should be a fun rematch of that game last year uh, I like the Falcons game week nine I mean these are two teams that feel like sure things to be really good regular season teams and there'll be questions about the playoffs because the Cowboys have struggled in the past about the playoffs and the Falcons yeah people doubt Kirk Cousins in the playoffs I really don't but it hasn't gone great I suppose but they're kind of a new playoff team as they should get there because they're really they should they're built to win games the regular season they have an easy division and a pretty favorable schedule um, so they're kind of the same team here like they both should be you know, explosive, productive. They're both fairly balanced, good on both sides of the ball. Also, Mike Zimmer versus Kirk Cousins. That's pretty interesting as well. So I like that game in week nine. And I love the ba the Bengals game in week 14. I know one's AFC, one's NFC, but it could have a lot to do with the playoffs here in terms of seeding kind of must-win range for these playoff teams. Uh, they are both very focused on the passing game. They are both both very focused on the passing game. The Bengals have already been a high passing team 
and like devalue the running back position even more this offseason. Get rid of Joe Mixon, bring in Zach Moss. To me, Mixon's definitely better than Moss, but Moss is pretty solid. But they have devalued the running back position. They, they, and we already know. With Joe Burrow and those receivers, and they've kind of valued the tight end a little bit more, it seems, in the draft at least, uh, you know, in, in general. But uh, they, 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 they want to air it out. Cowboys, they devalue the running back position, and they're already a, they're a team that airs it out. That's where their strengths are, um, you know, so... They're very similar teams at this stage of the season and you know where they're at, and they both have very solid defenses because of the rushers they have. They have some good uh, players throughout the, uh, their defense, and uh, Mike Zimmer was the Bengals defense coordinator before he got uh, that Vikings job, so that's kind of a bonus. It's an interesting one, even though it's been some time, but... Um, I always wondered that though, because you kept you kept thinking like Lou Anaromo is a great defense coordinator for the Bengals, um, like he's gonna get a head coaching job every year. We think that he doesn't, but I, always in the back of my mind, like since Zimmer lost the Vikings job, I was like, oh, the Bengals are about to lose Anaromo. They're they're gonna get Zimmer back as their defense coordinator, but it just never happened. The Cowboys, Jerry's a huge Zimmer guy, obviously got him, so um, that would kind of suck for the Bengals, like if they lost. On Romo this year, just after Zimmer got a job, and maybe they can't get him, or maybe they can pry him away from him. I don't know. Uh, but it's pretty interesting. So some big-time games there for the Cowboys this year that I'm excited about. And the, the fans' takes, Antronaut, rushing offense, consistency, and rotation. Yeah, how good will it be? Will they be last? That's a big question. They they probably won't be as good, even though I think Donald could be better than people think, and then maybe that group could be better than people think, but they, they rely on the pass anyways. But do they just have a lack of a run game where it kind of kills them and hurts them? Like they, you got to have a run game still. Both sides of the ball, you have to be able to run the ball. You have to be able to stop the run. Tyler Guyton progression through the season. Uh, yeah, I like Guyton. He's another guy that grew on me so much going into the, the last month going into the draft. I love the fit. The Cowboys know their offensive linemen, and they know how to develop them. I think he'll be good. They play, he has some tough competition this year who he's going to be lined up against, but um, I think he's going to be good. Someone to step up in that receiver three spot. Yeah, who's it going to be? I think signs point towards Tolbert unless they add someone else. Uh, but we'll see. Eric Kendrick's back in Zimmer's defense. Yeah, I mean, will we see vint- some vintage play? I mean, I preach about all the time linebackers. A lot of the times it, com- it comes down to scheme, what scheme they fit. We see it all the time, really good linebackers still on their team, and they change schemes or they change defensive coaches, and they just – they don't look like the same linebacker. Now he's back with his guy, Mike Zimmer. So I think he'll be better than he was the last couple of years, even the last year in Minnesota where it was a complete scheme change. Uh, but we, I, he was probably elite or maybe great at least for like two years. Um, he, he was good for much longer than two years. But I don't think he'll get back to like that borderline elite play. Um, maybe we'll see flashes. That's why he said some vintage play. Yeah, sure. Full season with Diggs and Bland and corner, uh, cornerback duo post-breakouts. Um yeah, it's good to have those guys back in there. They weren't together last year, so uh, and Bland was more of a rotation guy before that, so it'd be pretty good to see as long as they're healthy. Marshawn Nealon, yeah, I think a really good fit in Zimmer's defense. Uh, seem to be pro-ready type player. I think I'm passing that obvious passing downs. I'd watch out for him in that three-technique spot, perhaps. Uh, rotation guy off the edge, early downs, pass obvious passing downs. Could, could slide. It's just kind of a guess. But should be fun. Uh, RS Swimmer, Tyler Guyton, rookie season against. Yeah, he mentioned it too. He's going against. I love that he listed this because in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's going up against pretty good guys. Maybe all those guys won't be lined up on his side all the time. But Garrett, Burns, you know, JT, Huff, Sweat, Watt. Oh, my God. Yeah, they, he's. I love Guyton. I, lo- I love the fit. Great fit. He's going to be good for them. But that is tough. That is tough. How rough the transition uh, for the Dan Quinn pass defense oriented guys into a 360 scheme change. Yeah, it's kind of what I talked about. It's a really good point. Really good, really good talking point here. It's a little different. Um, I, the defensive front, not worried about it at all. At all. I think the linebackers actually get a boost. Linebackers get a boost. Uh, the, all eyes on the secondary. I think they'll be good because they have good players. Will the safeties be as good? Will the corners? The corners should have actually a harder job. Uh, they have to be a little smarter. Um, so that that's uh, all eyes on that. Uh, so it's a good point. How will the Cowboys consistently manufacture pressure? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, another good. I mean, in terms of um, like the pass rush, I think he means. 
yeah, I think we talked touched on it in in terms of how Zimmer gets pressure in this video. It's in definitely in unique ways. Tyson Wilson, CD, and Micah get traded. Oh, so it's a bold prediction. Get traded for less than expected before kickoff. I don't think it. Parsons is definitely not. Lamb, I mean, they'd be out of receivers. I, they, I, I don't. They're gonna give. They're gonna give Lamb what he wants. I'm not worried about it at all. They're gonna give Lamb what he wants. Just happens with receiver. People were freaking out about Jefferson, which was ridiculous, and he got it. He, he got it earlier than way earlier than anyone expected. So I, I, I'm I'm not worried about that. I don't think either. I think that's insanely bold. Uh, Logan Cowboys will go nine and eight, barely sneaking the playoffs and get crushed by whoever they play. I mean. History shows, I suppose, uh, so it's definitely possible. We have a Cowboys fan with a lot of takes here. Adam, uh, as a Cowboys fan, here's what I'm watching. Will Tolbert take Tolbert take another step as a receiver three? Yeah, I thought he'd be more effective right away as a rookie because he was a guy that you could just get a screen pass to and he could go, but they didn't really do that. He had some sneaky plays last year. I think he steps up unless they add a receiver. I'd watch out for them. Uh, last second, you know, maybe after you know preseason where – uh, teams cut like if somebody cuts somebody that's a pretty decent receiver young receiver they could pounce on that we will see where well, ricky uh, rico Dowdle emerges running back one by the end of the year i think he's running back one right away and throughout the year that's my take on that i'm surprised no more people don't have a take on that will cooper bb start week one uh as our coaches really like uh brock hoffman that's a good question bb did feel like a plug and play guy um he was pretty scheme dependent going into the draft. I think he found a right s- scheme. Where I didn't like is he kind of relies on his physicality. Sometimes he'll put his head down and just lunge at a guy. So he could whiff a bit. So it's a guy that I, I, maybe people were slightly higher on him than me. Just slightly. not It's pretty much in the same range. But for that reason, I saw that a bit. Just kind of going for just full go power. I'm going to you know, burst into this guy and sometimes he would whiff. Uh, so maybe they think he won't be ready for that reason. That's a good battle. I know they do like Hoffman. Um, I'm going to say BB. Um, that's tough. That's a really good question. We'll see uh, who will emerge as D tackle too. Will Mozzie take a step up? I think Zimmer will like Mozzie. Um, I, I do think he'll take that step up as that guy opposite of, next to Odigizua. We will see though. Will Diggs be the same coming off his injury? Yeah, I'd hope so. We had that question as well. To did kind of double trouble um, off the injury and a scheme change. I, I think he's that talented, though. I I, I like Diggs a lot, um, so I'm I'm rooting for him here. Uh, how much less turnovers will the defense have without Quinn? Um, good question. Good question because a lot of man coverage. Uh, you know, and they they had playmakers for that. But Diggs wasn't there last year. That's a big playmaker. Zimmer's simulated pressure could cause turnovers. I think they may get more sacks, believe it or not. Uh, Maybe a little less turnovers. But Diggs is back, and he's one of the the league's best playmakers. It's a really good question. Tough to answer. Uh, Takes Dak is second passing yards, first touchdown, 39. Yeah, I could lay him a second. I can definitely see it. Uh, Micah gets 15 sacks. I could see all that. I mean, it's going to be even more of a heavy pass team and that and Dak's out to prove something. Him and Lamb connection growing stronger. Like I said, simulated pressures could cause more team sacks is what I was kind of at, but Parsons is good enough to get that many sacks. We get the sixth seed and lose the Green Bay. I mean, that's a repeat of last year, but getting a second division is the only difference. Um, definitely could happen. Yeah, I think the Cowboys, could, if they make the playoffs, they actually could be more suited for the playoffs, but you also can run into a team like Green Bay again, which is a bad matchup, and Packers should be even better than they were last year. I think they're a super, serious Super Bowl contender, so they could be more suited for the playoffs, but still lose because they have to play a team like that. I think it'd be big if they can go out there and win the division. Uh, but that will wrap it up for this one. A lot of good points from you guys. Love having you guys involved. It kind of just creates talking points, makes me realize things as well. But really like this one. The Cowboys should be, they're more interesting than you think. They aren't just a team that stayed quiet in the offseason. They're, you know, not just the same team that maybe got worse on paper. They're a little more than that, and I'm excited about it. Uh, maybe because I'm a big Mike Zimmer fan. Maybe that plays a part as well. That's going to do it, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.